It's Brian Preston, the money guy. So now number five in terms of the seven things that we want you to know about money or that we hope that you figure out about money early on in your wealth building journey is that money doesn't watch the news. It does not pay attention to the headlines. I get a visual on this one. I mean, it really does. I don't know what um, Mr. or Mrs. Money looks like, <laughs> but I get a visual of them actually in front of the TV uh-huh. and or you can, as Daniel found us, Reading a, a, a the newspaper. newspaper. <laughs> um, and it's true. I mean, I think sometimes we, we make so much out of news media mm-hmm. and we let the short-term panics because I do feel like, remember, how does the media get paid? No one eyeballs. It's not from, you know, getting you to watch that segment. It's by selling advertising. That's what they need your eyes. They need your ears. They need your attention long enough so they can sell more ads. And guess what they, they found out? Happy news about puppies. Kids graduating and you know just fun feel good stock stuff. market gains. It doesn't it doesn't really play that well. Yep. You know the the whole if it bleeds it leads is mm-hmm. true with with media and finance and they've realized negativity is going to keep your attention much more than great positive stuff. And as a as as part of that they show and they they focus on politics pandemics. Yep. You know, all the negative sides of the economy, they want to do everything in the power to try to help you not build wealth for yourself, but to keep your attention. And that's something, a distinction you definitely need to understand. And it seems to us that there's very little accountability for being very, very wrong. Again, this is an illustration that uh, Daniel put together for us. If we just go back to the Great Recession, the last significant downturn that we saw pre-COVID, here are some of the headlines we've seen since then. Uh, The risk of a double-dip recession is rising. Uh, Time to say it, double-dip recession may be happening. Oh, why? America's big banks are predicting a recession. Uh, Six signs we're closer to the next recession than you think. Wall Street thinks a double-dip recession is more likely than a V-shaped recovery. All of these headlines came out over this 10- to 12-year period. And yet in the background, the S&P 500 kept just bebopping along. That yo-yo up the mountain kept moving higher and higher, and higher, and higher. I mean, even think about, we just came through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, 2020 was just an odd year. And you see the the headline, Wall Street thinks a double dip recession is more likely than a V-shaped recovery. And this is after the V-shaped recovery had already (laughs) made the V. V They were just saying, we were going to basically turn this thing into a W. But what did it do? It kept walking up the mountain. Nobody wants you to understand this. The press, the financial media, they don't know what is going to happen next yep. any more than anybody else. What we do know is that, look, technology, innovation, humankind wants to be better, more successful, and they want to continue to innovate and make life easier. Yep. I'm betting on that. If you look at the pace of innovation, it is accelerating not decreasing. Mm -hmm. If you look at the number of breakthroughs we make every decade now versus what we're doing every 50 years, you'll see that we are accomplishing so much that 20 years from now, we can't even imagine. All you are doing when you invest is you're buying into a little bit of that future success. Don't let anybody try to dissuade you that we're breaking everything Mm -hmm. down. You will be a part of the success. You just have to make the decision. Do I want to own it? Or am I just only going to live it? So uh, how, what's the practical takeaway? Or how can, you, how can you use this knowledge to your benefit? Well, we think the big thing that you need to really understand is there's a difference in information and actionable information, and they are not often intertwined. Just because you have a piece of information does not mean that it warrants an action or a reaction to that information. What's funny to me is we come up with show topics every two weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a whole list. We have a whiteboard, a virtual whiteboard. But when we put up with these, we don't know what's coming down the pipe. And then it's so interesting. You don't even have to try because this stuff just writes itself. We know that the pipeline got hacked. Mm -hmm. We all know that Colonial Pipeline got hacked. And here it is. Gas pipeline hack leads to panic buying in the southeast. That is information. Yeah, that is information. I don't know that I consider that actionable information other than if you're driving by a gas station, you see that it's open. Okay, if you want to feel I get it, you're reasonable, mm-hmm. but that does not mean what it does not lead to is that we need to start putting gasoline in trash bags <laughs> and then putting them in the trunk of our car. That is not 
actionable information. And yet this is the panic that I see so many people in the public. Now, fortunately, not so many people in the public are throwing gasoline in the in trunk of their car. I mean, this is trunk. just asking for, for <laughs> horribleness to happen to you. To the point that, you know, look at this. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission has to actually put on their Twitter feed to not do, do this not behavior. This is why we gasoline. have instructions on shampoo bottles yep. is that there are people out there that are just pushing the limits on what you consider mm-hmm. common sense. Information does not always have to be actionable, and you need to understand that a lot of the stuff that comes through your TV, through your radio, through the internet is information you can absorb, but don't necessarily turn it into actionable items. So the practical takeaway for you from an investment standpoint is if you see a headline or a news story, an article that says pending double dip recession is coming, you should ask yourself, well, is that going to affect me? Or... Do I have a plan in place that whether the recession does happen or does not happen, I have followed the financial order of operations, I have emergency reserves, and I have a portfolio that matches my unique risk tolerance and risk capacity so that, yeah, if there's a double dip recession, I'm going to be okay. I don't have to react. And if the market keeps going up, I'm going to be okay. I don't have to react. That's the place that you want to be in, not the place where you're trying to scramble and you make some very disastrous uh, long-term decisions to solve a very short-term problem. 